Guys, this GU has been around for a long time and literally started the channel here on Built Not Bought. And this time we are rebuilding the patrol from the ground up. So in the last episode, we stripped the thing down. And in this week's video, we start the reassembly process. Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode on the GU. This is part two of, I don't even know how long it's gonna take. But if you remember last time, we had so many dramas with the weather here. We painted it in the rain. We've been trying to get it to set. So it's literally been sitting here for about probably 10 days and it finally feels like it's hardened up so we can start assembling it. Um, I've already gone and washed down all the motor and the gearbox so in this episode we're going to try and get the diff rolled under it, um, get the motor dropped in and put all the brackets, mounts, cross members and everything on the chassis to get it back into a rolling stage. Alrighty guys, I'm on my little lonesome today, so we're gonna have to work with the tripod. Uh, Mitch is on holidays, but we are still pumping on with this GU build, so uh, enjoy the episode guys. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy it, and um, let's see what we get up to this time. Alrighty, it was a bit of a mish, but we finally got the chassis moved, flipped and rotated. Don't ask me how we did that, but we got it on the hoist. It was a struggle. So, a bit of an update of what's happening. We are, I got off the phone to DWiz and we are getting a new sheet metal front diff. Now, they do um, a strengthened housing, which can hold a lot more weight. So, it's been engineered and tested um, to increase that front loading on the front axle. And the reason I've done that is that Duramax is so much heavier than the motor that was in here from factory. So, because we got that on the way, um, we're not gonna worry about putting that front diff in at the moment. Um, we'll leave the rear one out as well, because that needs to be cleaned up. We're trying to keep that H260. Um, so the plan now is to drop the drive line back in. So I've given the Duramax a clean and a wash. Um, we're not really changing anything on that. It's an absolute bulletproof engine the way it is. We've got the stage two turbo, a plus 70 injectors, and a nice tune on there. So we're gonna drop that back in. Um, I'm replacing one of the engine mounts that looked a bit dodgy, and uh, the transmission will jump on here. So we'll get all that put in while it's on the hoist, and I can start um, putting all the accessories back on, the brake lines, hard lines, the fuel tanks, um, and any bits and pieces, pretty much everything we can except the diffs to get this under, because we have some brand new stuff coming from Superior Engineering, some brand new billet arms that they just released. Um, and also the suspension that we're using, I'm pretty much not changing anything. I've used this, uh, Superior Engineering suspension for about seven years now, and it's been absolutely bulletproof. So we're sticking with the same kit, just with some of their upgraded billet arms, and it'll be mint. Guys, I want you to comment down below if you are one of the OG followers of this channel. You would have seen this car be built a couple of times on here and you know it was the first thing that I ever built on Built Not Bought. So if you've just joined and you're enjoying the GU build, I want you to hit that subscribe button, uh, click the notifications bell and we'll let you know whenever we are doing another episode on this build and any ones we are doing in the future. And just on that note guys, um, I wanna give back to you guys, the subscribers. So in this episode, I wanna give away a $200 voucher to our website. So literally all you gotta do, just drop a comment down below um, and like this video and I'll be selecting one of the subscribers to give that voucher to. So thanks for the support guys. Rightio guys. You know when they say something's horsepower and you ride a horse, you it is time to put the big donk back into the patrol. Now, for the people that haven't seen this car before, as I build it, I'm just gonna go through very briefly about the bits we're putting on this thing. So, the Duramax power plant is the ultimate diesel conversion for any touring four-wheel drive. I've tried a ton of different stuff. I've had petrols, I've had diesels. Um, we built our 1HD FTE, we had the 1FZ, we put an LS in there, it had the supercharged LS, but this is the ultimate. It's quiet, it's comfortable, and plenty of torque. And it is a 6.6 .6 litre turbo diesel V8. So it comes out of a Silverado. This one's an LBZ out of a 2006 Chevy Silverado from the States. So it got imported. It was very expensive 
expensive, it costs about 20 grand for the motor and box and the conversion was a bit exy, but once it's in there, it's been the most bulletproof thing ever. So, we haven't touched it, we've given it a clean, replaced a couple of hoses and that that are spotted um, and just checked all the fittings. We're gonna drop this thing back into the chassis and continue on with building this patrol. This ain't gonna be easy on my own. Well, that was actually a little bit tricky on my own, and it's that heavy, the whole chassis just kind of fell off the hoist. So I've had to put a jack stand underneath the front, and it's kind of hovercrafting at the back there, but that's fine. So what I'm gonna do now, motor's in, do up the engine mounts. Um, this conversion actually uses TD42 engine mounts, which is pretty sweet, so I was able to get a new one easy. Um, and they're gonna hook up all the fuel lines, fuel send and return, um, and then start running wiring, and while I can access the back, get the dump pipe and stuff on there. So pretty much hook up what I can, and then once the cab's back from paint, we can send that all through the cab, make pretty simple. But fuel lines, um, I'm gonna run a new one up the, uh, up the rail there, because the feed line actually was getting crimped on the chassis between the cab and the chassis, so that's not good. I'm gonna change where that gets run and also replace these uh, filters. So this, this is from FAS. Now I'm not sure what I can get locally, but FAS is obviously from America. It's a lift pump that you need to prime the fuel system on the Duramax. One's um, a fuel filter and one's a water fuel separator. So they are probably due to be replaced. I just need to figure out where to get them. Um, that line was getting crimped around here. I had a P-clamp, so I'm gonna move it to the inside of the rail and run the fuel line up to this. Oh, sorry, it's this one here. That's the return. And she's all honky-dory. I found that this little bleed return for the injectors had cracked, so I need to replace that little bit of hose there. That's fine. And then just recover some of this wiring with some heat shield because this is a bit tacky. We used some car builder stuff and that should be mint, so. Let's rip in and do all that. Well, I have put the dump pipe on, which was fine, but then I discovered down here that we have a cracked bracket. So, that section of the exhaust should remain rigid with the motor. So that's why I've mounted it to the gearbox because the flex joint is here and from there back, it's all rubber mounted. So, I'm gonna re-weld this bracket here and just add a little gusset. Obviously, that was just TIG welded along that section, but I'm gonna make a little triangulated brace down to the side there and fix that join and then we can continue adding on the rest of the exhaust so i'm probably going to wait until we have more of the back together before we do that the exhaust is sort of the last thing that goes on and i do want to change the way that they come out the back of the tray there um, i do have a new train canopy coming so i'll uh won't let the cat out of the bag yet with what we're doing with that but at least we can get this front section of the exhaust sorted and all done up so um let's rip the tig out and fix this little bracket Hello guys and welcome to this week's tech tip. It's a little bit different this one, but I thought I'd film it because it's something that might interest a few of you. So I've got a little shipbox GQ down the back there and the only half decent thing on it's the motor, but it's a TB and it's got a carburetor. So I need to restore this carby and it worked out perfectly 
in line with WD-40's uh, repair challenge, which we're gonna speak about uh, at the end of this little segment. So, what we're gonna do, strip this thing down, rebuild it, only using these products. We've got some penetrant to get into the bolts, and then we've got some degreaser and your standard easy to reach WD-40. So let's root into it, restore this carburetor, ready for this motor. Alrighty guys, the uh, carburetor has been restored. It may still look like an old piece of junk, but works like brand new. Maybe a flick of paint or something will clean that up. But thanks to these products, we'll manage to get everything functioning and working properly. So this is part of an initiative from WD-40. It's the repair challenge. Now, if you want to enter to win in a cash pool prize or $4,000 with vouchers, coolers, and a bunch of stuff you can win, all you need to do is take a photo or video of yourself repairing something, whether it's at home, in the shed, or on your car, and send it into the guys at WD-40. I'll send, a, I'll put a link down below if you wanna go ahead and do that. Um, but check out the massive range of stuff from WD-40. I use it all day, every day around the workshop for different things. Um, their parts cleaner is really good for cleaning up stuff, and I was real impressed with the degreaser, because it has that bubbly effect. A lot of degreasers just pump on, and it kind of washes off. This has, you can physically see a chemical reaction taking place to clean the part you're working on. So go check them out guys and make sure to support the businesses that support Built Not Bought. Now back to the episode. All right, just off the back of that guys, if you want to uh, jump into our website, we've actually got a little promo going. If you just chuck in your email to our uh, VIP mailing list, you'll instantly get 10% off discount. So if you wanted to grab something, now is the time. We do have a little bit of that XC stuff left from the Flexi build. Um, and then we got some uh, old summer stock just as we get ready to drop some new stuff for winter, so stay tuned for that as well. Um, anyway, we're gonna start talking about diffs, in particular, the rear diff. Now, this is the one where you're gonna keep, so it's a H260, so that is the big patrol diff. So the H260s, uh, I think they're only in like the 4.5s and the 4.8s, the petrols. Um, really hard to find, but I managed to find one, um, and I braced this uh, a few years back. Um, and it's been pretty flawless. So it's got a really tight LSD in it. We did have a Harrop E-Locker. They're made to order and it's super expensive. And I managed to blow the dip to smithereens, clutch kicking um, at power cruise when it had the LS in it. So no more of that. That was too shock loading with the, with the manual. So now it's auto, it's not too bad, but this diff can handle the extra torque that the Duramax puts out. So we're gonna repaint it. I think what I'm gonna do is try some paint stripper. We're just gonna soak this thing and let all the layers of crap drip off, um, get it to sort of as bare metal as we can, and then we'll lay some more of that polyurethane um, U400 on there that we've done the chassis in, and I'm probably gonna replace all the brake calipers and brake lines anyway, we'll redo all that. But uh, first things first, we've gotta remove um, all the arms off this, get the bags off it, the arms, the sway bar. Um, we'll probably leave the tires on for now, let it drain, drip all the paints off with that paint stripper, and we start fresh, so let's get it stripped. diff is done and painted it's not amazing but it's freshened up the look so um i might roll that back under the rear of the car like i said we are waiting on those suspension arms um, but we'll let that paint dry i will be replacing the brake calipers and rotors so we're putting brand new brakes on this whole thing um, probably new hard lines too and we're definitely going to replace all the braided lines because they're probably three or four years old now so just for safety we're going to replace all that but um let's let that dry and Maybe this episode, maybe next, we'll roll this diff under. Alrighty guys, we interrupt this episode for 
another build. That is right, we are going to be throwing in some extra content on the Chevy and a few other projects. So basically what's happening is in the background, I've got a couple of other builds that I wanna do, which are sort of a personal project, um, not necessarily being built for the channel, um, but I want you guys to comment down below and let me know whether you actually wanna see content of them. So what I can do is throw like the last couple of minutes of each episode, throw in a bit of an update um, on my other builds going on. Um, we're obviously still doing the 4 stuff. We still got the patrol to do, the Hilux, uh, the F100, a ton of stuff coming up. But I do wanna get sort of these other projects that have been sitting in the background um, started on. So this one here is my Chevy, it's a 69 wagon. Uh, it's not an Impala, but very close. It's called a Kingswood. Um, the plan with this is to bag it, uh, tub it, and use it as a bit of a skid car slash drag car. We're gonna uh, initially put the LS, uh, the supercharged LS in out of the patrol, uh, which should make about a thousand horsepower. And then after that, we're gonna uh, make a big block for it. So you guys comment down below whether you wanna see this sort of build and I'll drop it in some future episodes. Um, not dedicated, but we'll sneak it in at the end of uh, other episodes. So uh, let's rip and do this one today. We're just gonna strip it down. Now, we'll talk more about why I got this specific car, but I do love wagons. The funny thing is, I bought this thing over three years ago and I still have not even looked at it. I bought it sight unseen uh, from a guy in Adelaide. It arrived and apparently, under this floor, there's a ton of stuff that will make it a car, like all the parts I need. And number two, it should be a nine seater, which means that seat comes up and this floor lifts up to a seat and creates a footwell. Now, I think that may be true because this rear door opens sideways as well as down, so it can actually open two ways, which is pretty sweet. But the reason that it opens that way is for that little footstep for people to hop in. So let's see if there is a seat and parts in here. All right, moment of truth. Is it snakes or parts or both? Oh God, oh, we have parts. Where are the snakes? Just looks very snaky in here. There's a floor, I don't think there's a seat in there, but go back like that. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I got stuck in for a bit and behind me is a lot of Chevy parts. We stripped it down pretty good. The good thing with these old Chevys is like the whole front comes off. So it makes it real easy to work on when you're trying to install a motor, make mounts and all that. This passenger door was an absolute nightmare and I haven't cut a hole of the panel out because it was all rusted inside and the latch wouldn't disconnect. So pumped a heap of WD-40 in there, but it wouldn't come undone. So finally got that door off. Fun fact though, I cannot for the life of me work out how to get this middle seat up. It's like, it's like sprung loaded, there's tension on it. So it's like it needs to go down, a latch be disconnected, and then it flicks back up because I need it up to be able to access these bolts to take it out. So if you know, comment down below because I may not have worked it out by the time this video comes out because I've been playing with it for a while. But uh, all the doors are off. I'm gonna pull that last seat out and strip the interior um, and then get the thing inside clean it up and work out what bits of rust. Um, someone's made us some new floor panels, so we'll weld them in properly. Um, I'm gonna take off all this interior panel because I wanna tub it. I wanna see how much of a big tire I can fit in there with the standard tub, because ideally, I don't wanna mess with the interior. If I go bigger tubs, then I'll probably lose my seat in there and I wanna have nine seats. So, turns out there isn't the rear seat in this, so I'm gonna have to find one um, because uh, they either have a nine seater option or just this little storage compartment. So I'm gonna flick that up and have the rear bench seat and uh, should be schmick. So probably leave it there for this episode. Like I said, I'm just gonna drop little bits here and there through other videos and comment down below whether you want me to continue to do that or I can just work on this on weekends and not show any of it. But I think it's good to just give updates every now and then as I tinker on stuff and as we're waiting for parts for the patrol or the Hilux or whatever we're doing. So we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.